Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will have a look at configuring OSPF between two routers using Cisco Packet Tracer. I'm using Cisco Packet Tracer for this, but if you want an emulator instead, something more real with end-to-end -end features, you can use GNS3, or you can even use Cisco Modeling Labs, which is the replacement for Cisco Vault. The downside to modeling labs is you have to pay for it. And the downside to GNS3 is you have to find Cisco images for it. And it's usually only supported on the end of life images. But although Packet Tracer is just a network simulator, it's a really good simulator and has been for many years. And you can do most things with it, like configuring OSPF. So the first thing we will do is we'll grab two routers into the logical main workspace area. We'll go with two 2811s and change the names to R1 for router 1 and R2 for router 2. So we'll call this R1 and this one we will call R2. Next we will cable them up. We'll provide a connection between them. So we'll go with this straight through cable. Connect from R1 on fast ethernet 00, 0 and we'll connect it to R2 on the same interface fast ethernet 00. 0. And we can see the cable here, we can see the red indicating it's down, but next we will configure the interfaces. So let's go to the CLI of R1. And let's go with no on the initial configuration dialog. And the first thing we will do is configure the host name. And call it R1. Next, before configuring the interfaces, let's have a look at them and see what they look like. So we'll do a do show IP interface brief. And we can see our fast Ethernet interface is in there. We will configure the fast Ethernet interface 00, 0 between the two routers to provide the connection for the two routers. And for testing purposes, we will create some loopback interfaces as well to imitate some subnets that we can share using OSPF. So the first thing we will do is configure the fast Ethernet interface of 00. 0. Let's bring it up, no shutdown, and we can see the status has changed to up. Next, we'll give it an IP address of 172.16.0.1 on a slash 24 subnet. And we will create our loopback interfaces. So loopback zero, and we can see the status has changed to up. IP address 10.0.0.1. Again, we'll give it a slash 24. And let's configure one more loop back. Loop back one. The status has changed to up again. IP address 10.0.1.1 on slash 24 subnet. And let's run do show IP interface brief again. Let's have a look at the interfaces. And we can see our fast Ethernet 00 interface. We can see the IP address configured for it. We can see the status is up, but the protocol is down, and that's because we have not configured the other side yet. And we can see our loopback interfaces here as well. We can see the IP addresses for them. And we can see both the status and the protocol is up for those. Before we configure OSPF, we will commit the changes on here, and then we will configure the interfaces on the other side, and then we will start to configure OSPF. Actually, before we jump onto R2, let's run a few more commands. So let's run show CDP neighbors, just to confirm that we cannot see each other yet. And we cannot see anything. Let's also run show IP protocols, just to confirm that there's no protocols running on this router. And we can see no protocols are running on this router. We will minimize R1 and configure R2. CLI. Let's do the same things again. No to the initial configuration dialog. En conf t host name of R2. Do show IP interface brief. And we can see the interfaces in here. Let's configure fast Ethernet 00. Bringing the interface up. We can see the status has changed to up. IP address. 172.16.0.2 on a slash 24 subnet 255.255.255.0 and let's configure some loopback addresses 
we can see that's changed to up IP address 10.2.0.1 and next let's do loop back two loop back one IP address I've already done look back one let's do look back zero instead IP address 10.2.0.1 oh it overlaps so let's do that again IP address 10.2.1.0 255.255.255.0 and let's do a do show IP interface brief and I can see loopback zero is still not configured so let's configure that again loopback zero and then let's give it an IP address 10.2.1.0 on a slash 24 subnet Sorry, dot one. Right, this time do show IP interface brief. And we've got all our interfaces configured on R2 as well. So we've got fast Ethernet 00, and we can see the IP address here, and the status is up, and the protocols are up. And we can also see our loopback 0 and loopback 1. We can see the IP addresses for those. I mix them up, they should be the other way around, but that's fine. And we can see the status is up, and we can see the protocols are up as well. And if we move this, we can see now our cable has changed to green, which means they can see each other. Hopefully they can see each other. They should be able to see each other. So let's do a show CDP neighbor. And there you go. We can see that they can see each other. So we can see that they can see each other on the fast Ethernet 00, zero interface. Again, I can run the usual commands just to confirm things before we start OSPF. So show IP protocol. Just to confirm that there's no protocols on here do show ip protocol and then we can do do show ip ospf neighbor but this is obviously not going to work if there's no protocols running on here but we will run it anyway we cannot see anything and we can do a do show ip root as well just to check the routing table i can also see on the left hand side nothing is being shared via ospf as well C stands for connected and L stands for local. We can see the codes up here. I'll commit changes first. Let's turn on OSPF. Let's go back into configuration mode. Router OSPF process ID of one. Let's give it a router ID. And this is R2, so let's give it 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. And let's throw the whole 10.2 subnet in here. So that would be network 10.2.0.0. And the wildcard would be 0 .0 0 0.0.255.255. And we will put this in area 0. Let's spell network right. Let's change that. And take the dot off as well at the end of 245. And let's put in the 172 interface in there as well between the two routers. Network 172.16.0.1. Let's put the specific interface IP address in there. So that would be 0.0.0.0. .0 and we will put that in area 0. The mask of 0.0.0.0, .0 it just means it's a full match on the IP address. And now OSPF has been configured on R2. So let's configure R1 with OSPF as well. Let's log into R1. Router OSPF1. Give it a root ID. Root ID of 1.1.1.1. Network 10.0.0.0. And the wildcard will be 0.0.255.255 .0 to capture the whole 10.0 network. And we'll put this in area 0. So the whole 10.0 network will be running in OSPF. So that will capture both our loopback subnets. One of them is on 10.0.0.0 subnet and the other one is on 10.0.1.0 subnet. So the 10.0 slash 16 basically will capture both subnets. 
and let's put in the interface address of uh, the connection between the two routers dot zero dot one and we will add just this specific IP address in there so zero dot zero dot zero dot zero in area zero I just want to move our one next to our two so I can see things at the same time I'll exit and save config on both of them and do the same on R1 now let's run show IP protocols and see if we can see OSPF running and there you go we can see OSPF is running on R1 let's do the same on R2 And we can see it's running on R2 as well. Let's do a short IP OSPF neighbor. And we can see that the neighbor has not come up just yet. And it looks like I have configured 172.16.0.1 incorrectly, it should be dot two. Dot one is the address on R1. So let me fix that. That should be dot two. Conf T router OSPF one. Let's do a no on network 172.16.0.1. Let's put in the whole statement in there, area zero. And then let's take out the no and change that to a two. And there we go, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting the message to come up to show that the OSPF neighbor relationship has come up. So I can see it on this side and it's connected to 1.1.1.1, which is router one. And on router one, we can see that it's connected to 2.2.2.2, .2 which is router two. But if we press enter here, now if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, So it's showing me the OSPF neighbor it's connected to. So it's showing me that R1 is connected to 2.2.2.2.2, which is R2. And it's built a full neighbor relationship with it. And R2 is the BDR, which is the backup designated router. And the address for R2 is 172.16.0.2. And the interface they're connected on is fast ethernet 00. So if I do that on the other side, show IP OSPF neighbor let's put a do in front of it and on this side it's vice versa so we can see r2 it's built a neighbor relationship with r1 on 1.1.1.1 that's the id of r1 that's the root id of r1 we can see that it's built a, a full state relationship and r1 is the designated router so the last thing we will do is look at the ip routing table do show ip root and great, that's what I was expecting to see. So I can see our loopback interfaces here have been shared via OSPF. So if I go back to R1 just to see the interfaces again, do show show IP interface brief. We can see here loopback zero and loopback one have been shared across using OSPF. Now if we run a show IP route on R1, show IP route and we can see the same thing again so we can see r2's loopback interfaces have been shared via ospf here so if we go back to r2 and do a do show ip interface brief we can see that these loopback interfaces here loopback 0 and loopback 1 10.2.1.1 10.2.0.1 have been shared using ospf here And one last thing about loopback addresses, although we configure them as a subnet address using a slash 24, part of a network basically, when advertised over OSPF, Cisco auto corrected it as a slash 32, a host address. And this is because Cisco thinks we made a mistake and is auto correcting our mistake because loopback addresses are not supposed to be used as part of a subnet. But there is a way around this. And currently, with the loopback addresses, they're configured in an OSPF broadcast network, a broadcast segment. And what you would do is you would make the loopback part of a OSPF point-to-point -point network instead. So how you would do this is you would go into the interface. So you would type interface loopback zero, and then you would type IP OSPF network point-to-point. -point. And once this is done, the OSPF would no longer change them with a slash 32 prefix. 
They would be advertised with the prefix you configured them with.